My name is Mark White and I'm the Chief Engineer for the Body Complete Business Unit. The Body Complete Business Unit looks after all of the body structure and all of the closures, that's the, the hang-on parts, that go onto the body, such as the doors, deck lids, fenders, etc. So the use of aluminium for, for vehicle designers really, it, it's something that's been there since the 30s and 40s. Lightweight materials make the cars perform. A lot of the early Jaguar performance cars, the racing cars, the C-types, the D-types, they would have been all made from aluminium. Aluminium's made a resurgence now because not only do we need performance, but we also need economy and low CO2 cars. And one of the ways to get to better fuel economy and lower CO2 is to make the products lighter. Aluminium is now becoming a very relevant material for the use in body structures and in uh, hang-on parts, such as the closures on the cars. And really throughout the vehicle, so the chassis systems, the powertrain, you'll see an increasing amount of uh, aluminium, whether that be in sheet form or in casting extrusion form. We'll see a lot more aluminium intensive vehicles in the next 10 years. I did a degree in transportation design and I've only ever had one proper job and that was with Jaguar Land Rover. I always wanted to be a car designer as a child. How you became a car designer was the bit that was a little bit um, unclear to me. So doing a degree in transportation design, that, that gave me a good exposure to all the different aspects of, of vehicle design and that helped me hone in on what part of vehicle design that I was interested in. I've always been interested in the bodies, how do we make the body shapes, how do we make the, the structural performance in terms of how the vehicle performs. I didn't really have a favourite subject at school. I, I was one of these people who had a combination of the arts and the sciences. So for example, my A-levels were uh, maths, physics, art and engineering drawing. So it's quite a, quite a, a mix. Um, and I guess anybody wanting to go into vehicle design has that same dilemma, you know, they're not sure whether they should be drawing cars or drawing gears, you know, it, it's one of those, you know, find your niche if you like and then focus in on that. I have, I've actually got many proud moments working for Jaguar Land Rover. I, I've worked with Jaguar Land Rover over 26 years now. Um, I've done most of the sports car bodies uh, since my career started. But I guess probably the, the, the thing I'm most proud of is, is the development of what we call the lightweight vehicle strategy, where now all of the premium Jaguar and Land Rover products and Range Rover products are moving towards lightweight. And I, I'm, I've been fortunate enough really to lead that team and lead that effort. So that probably makes me the most proud that we have transformed some of our vehicles in, not only in our eyes, but in the eyes of the public into much more sustainable vehicles. I think the first thing you should do if you're going to enter the competition, and by the way it's a great competition, I was fortunate enough to be one of the judges last year, uh, one of the things you should do is first of all read the brief. You know, that's the really important thing, to understand what's the brief asking you to do. And whilst you want to be as creative as possible, you also want to meet the criteria for the design because in the real world, we have a set of criteria that we must design the next car to. And whilst it may be the greatest design in the world, if it doesn't meet the criteria, i.e. we don't meet the new legislation or we don't meet the fuel economy or the CO2 performance, clearly we could have the best car design in the world but actually fail to satisfy the customer demand. So reading the brief is the really important thing. And then after that, be as creative as you want. You know, almost go into free vend in the early parts of the project to be as creative and then recheck yourself against what are the criteria that the competition is asking you to meet. So I think it's really important that, that, that not only have you got a great idea but you've, you've used the material in a way that is worthy and that, that, that meets the criteria of good use of the material and that the material is able to be recycled at the end of it and, and have a think about how you will dismantle the part at the end of its life and then turn it into something else or even better still reuse it so it can be turned back into that product. If you can take something, recycle it and turn it back into the thing it was before, that's the best use of the energy and it creates the least waste. What we're looking for when we're judging is really First of all, have they met the brief? And then secondly, how much background research have they done into what's already out there at the moment? Um, being as creative as possible to invent new ideas and come up with 
new ways of fixing existing problems because most things have already got solutions. It's just about how do you create something new. So look at benchmarking what have other people done in the past and then be creative in your approach to the project and then just double check yourself at the end when you've honed in on that great idea that you think is a winner, check that that idea meets all of the criteria in the original brief.